Welcome to VW 4.4. Today we're going to be talking about average rate of change and we're also going to use your calculators today. So first, I want you to highlight average rate of change. You're going to be seeing this a lot and if you ever see this, that's very, it's a very fancy way of asking you to simply find the slope. And recall that slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now what we're going to do first is graph this 3x squared in our calculator. So go to your HP prime. To graph, you're going to hit this symbol button right here. So again, it should be in home and then hit symbol. Or if that's not working, you go to apps and then function and that'll take you there. From here, we're going to type in three. X is on your touch screen, or you can just hit this key right here with the X on it. I'm highlighting it right now. And then squared is going to be right here above the EEX or diagonal of the seven. Now hit enter. Now we can graph it right here. And for the purposes of this, we're going to actually play with the scaling. I want you to really get quadrant one. So we're going to move to quadrant one. And then we're going to pinch and zoom. So notice how I'm pinching out. And I'm going to pinch down right about there. And I'm going to pinch in a little more. So you should have something like this. And I'm actually going to pinch even further down. Right about here, that's pretty good. So if you have something like this on your screen, that's great. Screenshot this and then we're going to move it back to your notability. So it should look something like this once you screenshot it, something similar. The reason I had to play with the, the wind a little bit is because of the example. So you see how it says find the rate of change from one to three? What that means is you're looking for the rate of change from when x equals one to when x equals three. So the coordinates are gonna be one comma three and three comma 27. So that's why I kind of had to shrink the graph like that. So for this, let's calculate the slope. That would be 27 minus three over three minus one that's 24 over 2, which is 12. I'm going to put that on the picture. So the point is from x equals 1, so that would be right about here, to when x equals 3. So that'd be right here. What we just found is the slope of that line is 3. So that's our blue one. We'll do the next one in red from 1 to 5. So that would be one comma three and five comma, 25 times three is 75. So M is gonna be 72 over four. So the slope should be 18. And again, let's draw it. We're anchoring the point from one to five, two, three, four, five. So notice how the slope is getting steeper. So we should expect a higher number. This one is going to be 18. The last one I'll do in green from 1 to 7. So once again, we have 1, 3. And the point should be 7. This is a big one. 49 times 3 would be 147. So that's a pretty huge number. And that's why the scaling gets kind of crazy. So M should be, that's 144 over 6, which is 24. So let's anchor it. One, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right there. And there we have it. Those are the lines that are on the graph with what we're doing. And this slope would be 24. So what we're doing by connecting that is we're actually creating what's called a secant line. So all of these are called secant lines. And what they do is they simply connect 
two points on a graph. This is different from tangent. Earlier we we're doing tangent lines. Tangent lines connect or are tangent lines connect a line to exactly one point on the graph. A secant line would just connect two points. So again, secant is what above right there. Tangent would be something like this, where it hits exactly one time. Tangent line. Okay, so now you can see the example here. I explained that because it says find the equation of a secant line. So first for A, it says find the average rate of change from negative two to one. So let's plug in negative two. That would be 12 plus four plus three, that's 19. And the other point is one. So plug in one, we get three minus two plus three, that would be four. Let's find the slope. That'd be four minus 19 over one plus two. That's negative 15 over three, negative five. So here's the slope or the average rate of change. Now it says find the equation of the secant line that contains these two points. So we can use point slope form with any point. I'll pick this point because it looks clean. Y minus four is equal to negative five times X minus one. I'll put in slope intercept form to make it a little bit nicer. So Y would equal negative five X plus nine. But both of those are perfectly fine since it didn't specify. Now it says use a graphing utility and draw the graph of G and the secant line. So now you're gonna go back to your calculator. So apps function, delete that. And we're gonna type in three X squared minus two X plus three. Now when you graph it, notice how the scaling's kind of off now. We're gonna reset it. We're gonna hit shift and then plot, then shift escape. That's gonna standardize your plot to make it cleaner. So now that it's standardized, let's go back. So notice how we have our parabola, looks really good. What I'm also gonna do is graph the line. So I'm gonna go back to symbol. I'm gonna tap the one right below it and put negative five X plus nine. Now I'm gonna graph it and I can see both now. So let's kind of play with our window. Let's zoom a little bit so we can see both of them in a nice way. Something like that. We're gonna screenshot this and let's drop it into our notes. So we should have something like this now. So we can see that the secant line is right there. That's the red line. There's our secant line. Let me write that a little nicer. And remember the tangent line is different. Tangent would be something like this. If it hits at exactly one point, that's your tangent line. And later on in math, like in calculus, you do, you do more of that stuff for a curve anyway. Here's the last example, an advanced average rate of change problem. It says find the average rate of change for that function between the following two points. So first let's figure out the other part of this right here. So we have three over two and F of three over two. Let's actually plug that in. So I plug in three over two. I'm gonna get 15 over two minus three. That's 15 over two minus six over two. That's nine over two. So the point is gonna be three over two, nine over two. And the other point, it says F, F of X. What we're gonna do is actually plug in the function itself, five X minus three, because F of X isn't very helpful. So we're gonna get rid of this and plug in five X minus three, since that's the same thing as F of X. It states F of X is that. Now that we've done that, let's plug it in. M, the slope is gonna be five X minus three minus nine over two over x minus three over two, 
let's clear the complex fractions out. So m is going to be 10x minus 15 over 2x minus 3. Perfect. So there we have a more advanced problem. Notice how we found the average rate of change between some fixed point and some generic point. That's pretty cool.